360 Rain is designed to ban water and nitrogen and micronutrients and all the things that you and I know we need throughout a growing season to help us take that giant step ahead. But if we start to dream and think a little, when 360 Rain lives in the field throughout the whole growing season, let's talk about seven other things that Greg and Tim are thinking about can make quite a difference. We think about even emergence. Let me give you an example. As we look here, in the seed corn industry, they force us to plant the male row every fifth row, sometimes in some really hard conditions. In this case, it got cemented in. This is the same field that Tim just showed us uh, where we did all the 360 rain results, but in this particular year, it was in seed, and that seed male corn was not coming. In the seed business, if you don't have a pollinator, you're dead in the water. So we came in at this John Deere sprayer, and I put on a quarter of an inch by tying the wide drop hoses together, and I created that quarter inch just in a small strip, and it was amazing the kind of emergence and how deep that moisture went, and we were able to get that corn up and out of the ground, and it actually saved that 55 acres that particular year. So when I think about 360 rain, and I see here what you know, 15 hundredths of an inch looks like over the top of that planet row when we're in a crescent state. When you and I are sitting there, do we bring out the hoe out of the shed that hasn't moved for five years, or do we not? Do we hope the good Lord gives us a rain and softens it? In this case, if rain's already in the field, get on your iPad and push go, and we start to soften this, and all of a sudden we have a beautiful, even emergence where every plant come up within 12 hours of each other. And those are things that we're looking at. What else? So I think about managing late emergers. And maybe this gets a little bit on the fringe edge, but I think about the perfect population. And we know that there's times that some seeds emerge late, and when they get two collars behind in height, they basically are just a weed. And they're out there robbing moisture and nitrogen, P and K, and all the micronutrients, and they're taking sunlight. And so as I think about a machine that's moving at eight inches a second, and with the camera technology that we've been able to put on here as we're watching, and I'm starting to look at every plant, all of a sudden in that 160 acres, I know every plant, what size it is, whether I like him or I don't like him, and to me, it wouldn't be that far out of the playing field if we were able just to snip him out. If you're not going to produce, you're going to be gone, and we're going to take you to the side. It's all about getting the right ear count and understanding exactly where it's going to go. How about weed control? In the 31 farmers I brought in, I intentionally brought in some of the top organic growers in the United States. Some of these guys are raising over 3,000 acres organic. You got to remember, just double it, and that's what that farm looks like in any given day of all the labor required. And I envision 360 stepping into a different paradigm and we talk about weed control and weed management. Obviously, where I've taken my Hagee here and I'm doing pre-planting, I'm coming in and putting down a herbicide. If rain lived in this particular field, here's 90 acres, and if rain lived there, it could have that pre-emergence herbicide down long before the planter come, or we think of all any kind of a, you know, preventive uh, herbicide going down, it's going to have that capability because obviously we got water. And once we got water on that boom, it's nothing to put a stainless steel canister of an active ingredient, no matter what the product would be in it. And all of a sudden we have one of the best sprayers possible. What about when we're talking about non-GMO soybeans where we got to go in and do a lot of hand weeding to keep that? And this comes in where the organic guys are. What about an LP tank on there for flamers? So all of a sudden, with this type of a robotic tool in the field, there's a lot of things that start to come into play to manage throughout the whole growing season. And we're going to be able to come in and eliminate some of the things that give you and I quite a bit of heartburn. When it comes to nutrient management, I don't think there's anything that can touch what 360 rain can do. It's got the ability to come in and put on nitrogen, N, P, and K, micronutrients, sugars, everything that we think about that's going to take in any kind of prescription you'd want to put in. This is a 55-acre silage field in Florida, 
that we're working on. And you can see the nitrogen wreck here for this silage field. And so the darker areas are much more required nitrogen, uh, you know, a little less and then quite a bit less as you look at that map. It's simply a matter of controlling as the speed of the machine as we go through the corn row on that planter pass. Of course, using these kind of nitrogen pumps, we now have multiple ingredients that we can put in at the same time. This is where the field that Tim was talking about, so we had all kinds of extra stuff mixed up in the yellow tank there. And so this pump is put, this one's putting in 32% nitrogen in the water stream here. This one was adding in all kinds of the extras, boron and sulfur, and we had some P and K in there, and all the things that we thought could take it to the next level, we we're able to put in the water stream itself. But when I, as a livestock guy, and I think about this hog farm, and I think about what's underneath this slat, I get really excited thinking, how do we manage manure application? For the practice now is, and every state is starting to write in their nitrogen handbook some really interesting requirements. You take Minnesota, for example. It's getting to be really an ugly baby if you are careful about, they really want you to put it on in the spring and the summer. They're really concerned about any type of snow, you know, application or frozen ground. And we know what these machines are doing to our soil compaction and that type of thing. So when I think about rain and manure management, in other words, as we go out to the south, we're injecting manure in with a small amount of water. Coming back, you know, to the north, we're going to go ahead and water that in, that manure we just applied, right down in the root system. You take my dairy here. And I know my neighbors probably don't think so, but I call that 1.7 million gallons of black gold. And you can see here we're agitating, we're getting ready to spread. So instead of going out to a drag line applicator, why not going out right to my water hydrant? And if a manifold system there, I now start putting manure at the right rate every pass through in the summertime, I start to actually put on manure and it starts to take one of the problems for livestock growers and making it into quite an advantage. And I think of the organic growers, this could be the answer that they're looking for. At that speed of a field, we can do a lot of field sensing. Like I said, there's cameras that we can put on the machine. We can start to look at the plants. And also, what about taking soil tests on the move in the different soil zones that we're at? How would that look? And so you can see here, you know, as we're moving that slow, we're going to be able to get down and get those soil tests in. What about is it, what areas of the field are starting to show up gray leaf on certain soil types or certain varieties? When I have that machine in, now all I do is go on my iPhone and I look over at the top 55 and I say, is the Pioneer 1197 showing up some gray leaf? And if it is, with the water we have on 360 rain, there is no problem of putting in some fungicide when with undercover, we start to really go after that problem. And this guy, I can't wait. You start to see insect pressure, and you see that Japanese beetle feeding on that silk, he's gone. The minute he shows up my phone, I'm pushing the button and we're taking him out. And you can see here at a high speed, on a haggy with the undercover hanging on the boom and we're spraying and covering every leaf. You start to think about the speed we're going and I get excited thinking about the response and the control that we're actually going to get. As we think about stress management, and we talk a lot about how do we manage this plant all the way from emergence. You know, you think about a plant, and we talk about a lot of 360, the three things that really drive yield. You know, and we talk about as soon as this plant starts to emerge, the things that start to take place. We always say at V5, you know, how many kernels around are we going to set? Is it going to be 18, 20, heaven forbid, only 14? Now, that's not something we want. This is all due to stress. Then we always talk about ear length. You know, on every kernel long, you know, did we blow off eight kernels on the tip? Because if we took those off, that's 50 bushel. So manage it. And then, of course, we talk about kernel depth and weight itself. What's the depth of this kernel 
And so when I think about in the future, and this year I saw it, Tim re related to it. Even in that field where we put on, and I think, I'm going to guess, I should know off the top of my head, I think we made 12 trips across, uh, 12 different times that the rain unit went across that field at four and three quarters of all the water that we added. But I think about what the kernel depth it was. And we talk about 65 bushel response. This is exactly what I'm referring to. Early, mid-season, and late, this is what we're looking for when we talk about stress management. And when I think of stress management, I think about how can we cool. Look at the difference on the dry strips here where Tim just showed us. And you think about this, and you say, well, this area here in this soil type is under a lot of stress. How fast? Because a lot of you are saying as we go through this, you're saying, man, that thing's moving slow. Why? Tim said it took, what, four days to get a whole 160 done. And so the well's here. And here's your machine. You can see, so the machine's way down over here. And so it's sitting right here. And you say, well, Greg, I'm showing that we're having all kinds of heat stress over on this side. How long is it going to take me to get over there if I'm down here in the very far corner? Well, it's going to take you one hour. In one hour, that machine can go a half a mile. So at the most, you're going to come here, and you're going to come back and forth, and you're going to come in here, and you're going to take care of all that stress that's there in those spots. And we're going to cool that down, and we're going to be down at the root system. We're not going to shock him, but we're going to add, and you can see the effect right here. Look at right here. This was a day ago with a thermal camera, and look at how cool we made that. And right next door in the dry strip, Look at the response there. And so in a stress management, I think it's going to be something that really makes a difference. How about in-crop seeding? In other words, as we look across the Corn Belt and we see cover crop becoming very, very prominent, why wouldn't we, with a manifold at the hydrant, put in seeds as they come to the rain unit, they go through our boom system, they come down the drop, and we put a flat fan there, and we just blow that water and that seed, and we cover it on the way out, seeding. On the way back, we water it in, in standing crop. So by the time you harvest here, you got an excellent cover. I don't care whether it's radishes or whether you're on rye, cereal rye, or oats, or whatever your sweet peas, whatever your choice is, I'd look for this to become a mainstay. And so this starts to answer a lot of those different questions. These are just a few of the things that Tim and I are working on. I can't wait to rub shoulders with you because once we realize that a rain unit lives in that field throughout the growing season, you can start to share with me some of the thoughts that you would have on next steps to having this style of a platform readily available to each of us.